So good afternoon, everybody. Um, as we said, my name is Jason Carlin. I'm the manager of product education here in Exania, and it's my pleasure to be your presenter today. As we discuss the top reasons to automate your time and expense processes, and also why organizations are working with Nixonia to achieve efficiency through automation. Uh, as Harmony mentioned at the start of the call, um, if you have any questions, type them into the chat box and we'll answer them at towards the end of today's session. Um, but otherwise, let's dive right in and just cover what our objectives are today. So for our agenda, I'll be taking us through some of the challenges we're seeing when it comes to expense reporting. We'll talk about the benefits of automating the expense reporting process and talk to some of the efficiencies and results we're seeing with integrated accounting solutions in Nixonia. Then what we'll do is jump into a brief demonstration of Nixonia, showing a user completing an expense report and showing some of the concepts that we're talking about here today as we move that expense report from the submission through the approval stage of things. Now, today's webinar will be focused on expenses, but we'll also touch briefly on Nixonia's time products here and there as well. All right. So for those of you who may not be familiar with us, just a brief introduction. Uh, Nixonia has been serving a global customer base since 2004, developing technology to make corporate time and expense management easy, efficient, and automated. Now, since then, we've worked hard to expand the features and functionality of our products and the ranges of industries we support. In June of 2017, we also merged with Certify, another expense report provider as well. Now, Nixonia now serves over 9,000 companies in 18 countries with a wide variety of customers in every industry. Now combined with Certify and our Tally brand as well, we're actually the largest independent so expense software organization in the world. Now, we're also known as software as service, which means there's actually nothing to install on your desktop computer. You can access Nixonia via the cloud through any major web browser, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Explore 9 and Up, or through our mobile applications, which allow you to submit and approve expenses and timesheets via Apple iOS devices, Android, or BlackBerry 10 devices and up. And even though it's our, our technology and our product integrations that are the key components about what attracts growing small and medium-sized businesses to Nixania, it's really our commitment to exceptional customer experience that sets us apart. It's a collaborative experience from onboarding with our implementation and training teams through to going live with access to Nixonia support. We're going to be with you every step of the way. But enough about us. Let's actually talk a little bit about some of the efficiencies we see in time and expense management. So let's talk about expense reports specifically. Now, the process of expense reporting, uh, entering, entering expense report information, it can be really frustrating and actually it can actually be too time consuming. It becomes difficult to scale and frustrating, especially if you're using a manual expense reporting process. Now by manual, we mean any process where you're still submitting forms, hard copies of receipts and information may be entered on forms or into Excel spreadsheets, for example, and then having to be rekeyed into an accounting system. These manual processes create challenges for the submitter and ultimately also affects the quality and the integrity of the information being passed into finance. So consider some of these numbers from a recent study from the Global Business Traveler Association. Now, based on a survey of small to medium-sized businesses, they found these commonalities. They found, for example, it actually takes up to 23 minutes to complete one expense report. And then add on to that about 15 to 22 minutes to correct the errors in that report. And on average, 22% of all the reports came with errors. Now, on top of that, of course, that's problematic. The time that's spent on expense report is costing you really productivity and leading into additional frustrations. When a survey was done of t and &E program administrators, they found there are some pretty common complaints. So for example, they have, they have problems with employees who are losing paper receipts or submitting expenses without proper documentation. They also have the challenge of employees dragging their feet and failing to submit those reports on time. And then, as we mentioned, ultimately the time that's being involved with reconciling, reviewing, and approving these reports. There's also the approval process where they're reviewing everything for any policy violations. 
and then dealing with the errors on reports, things submitted without the with the wrong codes, wrong documentation, amounts being uh, miskeyed or miswritten, for example, all these things undermine the, the entire expense reporting process. Now, we touched on this earlier in terms of the time involved with expense reports, but actually, when you look at it, there's a cost as well. Even with a manual process, which is typically perceived as being free because it's created in-house, there is a cost involved. According to Paystream Advisors, who did a recent survey, they found when you actually add it up, the average cost to process an expense report manually, a single report, works out to about $26.63. Now compare that to the cost of a report processed through a fully automated system, which is only 685 per report. Now what's involved with that, of course, is the time of everybody involved in this expense reporting process, but also the hidden costs. So you've got the card cost of paper and printing and postage, uh, the time required for reconciliation, audits and reimbursements. On top of that, you also may be dealing with storage fees to archive the expense reports and retrieve them when you need to review them. And ultimately, it's lost productivity and lost opportunity. Now, when we actually look at the expense reporting uh, processing costs, we actually found that 44% of organizations surveyed didn't even have any idea how much they spend on expense report processing. So when you actually look at it that way, of course, that's a lot of dollars being, pro being spent on the expense report process and, of course, significant savings moving to an automated process. So, for example, at Nixonia, we charge $10 or less per user and users can create as many expense reports as they need. So as you can imagine, if they're doing two, one or two expense reports a month, you're looking at significant savings. So. When it comes to the, the driving force about what drives people to automation, it comes down to these key, key elements. Um, it's about simplifying the process for the employees and the managers, providing system accessibility from anywhere, uh, whether it's online or mobile. It's about gaining reporting and analytic insight around t and &E spending, and improving employee compliance rates to corporate policies, and ultimately being able to reimburse the employees faster. So with these challenges in mind, this is why we see organizations moving to an automated solution. So let me touch on the five reasons why you'd want to automate your time and expense process. So first of all, ultimately, it comes down to simplifying the process. Simplifying the T&E reporting process by automating allows for quick and easy report creation, removal of the opportunities for human error, and automating workflow processes and approvals. A reduction in employee reimbursement time, of course, is a great example of some of the benefits of simplifying this process. Streamlining processes enables employees, managers, and accountants to focus on growing their business, not into sinking time into doing expense reports, of course. The idea with automation is to take the manual or paper out of the process. Every time you're talking about a manual process, what you're talking about is a number of handoffs from creating the report to submitting it, to getting sign off, to getting it to finance, and then ultimately rekeying it to the finance system, for example. Each of these opportunities represents an opportunity for error. Something gets keyed in or filled in incorrectly, the wrong documents attached, something gets lost. With an automated system, all these handoffs are eliminated because everything's taking place automatically within a contained system. So that way you're actually able to let the system do the work for the employees and simplify the process. Now let's talk about accessibility as a driving reason to move to automation. Now, at, of course, I've worked in a lot of different places and I filled out my share of expense reports. And accessibility is one of the key benefits I appreciate with automation. So when you consider it, if you're working with a manual process, so those spreadsheets, those forms, when are you able to do your expenses? Typically, you have to do them while you're in office. So instead of doing your work or focusing on whatever your, your purpose is, you're sinking time into doing expenses. So of course, the more complicated it is, if it's harder to access the system, you're just dragging your feet getting these expenses in. It's, it inflates the time involved with the creation of the report. Being able to create expenses and to do approvals even on the web or through a mobile application 
it gives you back that productive time. It takes you far less time to do the expense reports through these mobile applications, through the web applications, being able to do them wherever you are. For example, when I'm on the road traveling, I just save my receipts as I go on my mobile app, and then create my expenses while I'm waiting for my flight or on the plane or even while I'm in the cab. Now, as well as a manager, my employees are able to submit their expenses directly to me, and I can actually review them directly on the mobile application, looking at receipts, deciding if I need to approve or reject something or get more detail from them. It just makes it that much quicker and easier to do the expenses and the approvals. And a little secret, as I said, when you're doing manual expense reporting, it eats into your productive time. By giving employees tools that they're already used to with mobile applications, for example, they can do their expenses anywhere. They may not even realize they're actually doing their expense reports on their own time. So you actually gain that much more productivity from them. And when I talk about giving them the tools that they're already used to, well, everyone's already using mobile devices or at least quite familiar with them, typically. 97% of business travelers are traveling with at least one mobile device on them. In fact, 80% of them use their smartphone to actually plan or book corporate travel in 2014. So let's talk about reason number three, compliance. The best cloud-based accounting solutions, they help you establish strong auditable controls by allowing you to easily set controls and policy rules, such as spending thresholds for approvals or um, policy rules on each of your expense categories. For example, um, are receipts required? Is there a spending threshold? Even how old the expense is allowed to be can be used as a condition on the expense item. Not only does software take the guesswork and the manual hassle out of the process, it comes with controls that make enforcing these policies easier. A quality expense and time management solution is going to be tailored to your organization's needs. So for example, from creating your custom expense categories and documentation requirements through programming in what your approval chains are into the system, it's able to accommodate all these different variables. Now let's take a look at compliance from the approver's point of view. Now with the manual process, in theory, the, approvals, the approver is basically reviewing every expense report submitted, searching through that, that, that haystack, looking for those uh, you know, 20% or 5% of reports that have violations, that have something wrong. So it's very kind of reactive. They gotta look through everything. With an automated expense solution, you can set up rules so that items that are out of policy are flagged to the attention of the approver. So what this means is instead of looking at 100% of expenses and digging deep into all of them, the 20% of items, for example, that need your attention are flagged to the approver. So they'll know uh, right away what their priorities are, what they need to focus on, what requires a deeper dive. Tracking these violations also allows you to track expense behavior. So when you do an audit, say it's quarterly or annually, you can actually dig into the expense behavior and figure out what the average spend is, for example, or what types of items are typically triggering the violations. Or is there a specific user that's getting frequent violations and really you're going to have to have a bit of an offline conversation with them. Now as well, with these policy rules that are set up, it means that you're seeing a lot fewer uh, expenses submitted without receipts. With Nixonia, for example, you're able to capture those receipts digitally, photographing them, emailing them in, uploading them, and you're linking them to the individual expense items. Being able to save the receipts as you go, as you go and saving them digitally means you're going to be scrambling a lot less for that missing receipt or that smudge documentation that you're trying to read three months later on an audit. And as well, with the compliance rules, as I said, it takes some of the guesswork out of the process. You may have users who know those expense policy rules inside and out, back towards the front. But if you're only doing a, uh, occasional expense reports, for example, you may not be as familiar with the rules. Uh, you may have to ask a lot of questions of the admin about if something's correct or not. It's a lot of back and forth and more inflated time going into this expense process. If they know the rules as they're creating the expenses, if things are being flagged to their attention, um, if things are uh, highlighted that they must fill in on an expense, for example. Well, essentially that means things have to be correct before they even hit the approval process. There's a lot fewer questions being asked and uh, a lot a higher percentage of correct items being submitted into the approval process. This means you're streamlining the process and eliminating a lot of that back and forth time and correction time, and ultimately increasing the time, uh, improving the time, I should say, for when the employees can get reimbursed. 
So let's also talk about integration. One of the key reasons why you move to an automated system. When your system provides a centralized workflow, everything's in one place basically, critical data is maintained, handoffs are eliminated, and the risk of that data being lost is mitigated. Now also, this becomes quite important as key personnel leave your organization. You know where everything is kept. Everything is kept in one place, from the expense reports to the documentation, everything's in one location. Creating the workflow approval process as well and automating that into a central location, it demonstrates to auditors that you've got a system in place for approvals. And in fact, certain transactions can't be completed without proper sign-off. Without a centralized system, there's a general lack of control which can result in agencies or auditors determining that ultimately your accounting processes as they are may be inadequate. This is where integrations are key. So for example, uh, we integrate with Intact as an ERP or other systems as well. What this means is your Nixonia environment is created with all your key reporting values matching up with your ERP or accounting system. So for Intact, for example, we're integrating the dimensions from Intact directly into Nixonia, using those to drive the creation of the expense reports or the creation of the user profiles or even defining the approval workflow. Uh, with those of you maybe using Dynamics GP, we would basically set up Nixonia to reflect whatever your reporting segments are. So rather than having to deal with a, a long uh, three segment reporting string on your GL, for example, we break that out into certain Nixonia objects so it's easier for the employees to create their expenses. As I said, the idea is to remove some of the guesswork and make sure they're using the system information so what you're getting is user-driven expenses coded correctly. Now, with integration, that also means, of course, your exports are fully formatted, there's no rekeying involved, the information's creating the transactions directly in your ERP once they're fully approved. Now, integration also means that you're able to integrate credit cards, which I'll talk about in a moment, so that your credit card feeds, they can actually be integrated to Nexonia so that tr those transactions flow into Nexonia. As admins and finance, you got visibility on those transactions. So, Everything's in one location, so you don't have to compare the credit card statement, you don't have to go into the expense spreadsheet to try and figure out apples to oranges when it comes to reporting. You're able to go in the system and get real-time information on expense behavior as it's happened. With integration, you're reducing the data entry and the errors that come, come, come from having multiple redundant systems as well. Now, touching on the subject of corporate credit cards, when we're talking about integration, uh, I also like to highlight this. Now, corporate credit card programs, they, they may intimidate some, some organizations. That's because they're worried that if they hand out these cards, it's going to be uncontrolled spending. It's going to be the Wild West. But what you need to do is take the corporate credit cards programs and integrate those with an automated system like Nexonia so that you're leveraging the best of technology and enforcing these policy rules. Corporate credit card programs, of course, can manage where, when, and how much an employee can even spend on the card. Um, as well, there's a lot of data that's available from these corporate cards. Um, and also some cultural benefits. I mean, in a lot of organizations, you may have employees that are paying expenses out of pocket. If you've issued corporate credit cards, there's less stress on the employees. You actually get shorter processing times. As well, you get full visibility into spend, as well as added benefits like you know cashback reward or uh, travel reward points or preferred vendor rates, for example. Now, when you're integrating your corporate credit card with Nixonia, the credit card transactions actually show up in Nixonia, typically the next business day after posting. They're automatically assigned to the user, and they can actually use them in the expense report to populate the expense information, like the date and the amount. Now, as well, of course, saving the employee time on the creating the expense is great, but on the finance side and the min side, as I mentioned, once that transaction is in Nixonia, you've got visibility into it. You can run a reconciliation report and easily identify where is that transaction sitting. Is it assigned to the user? Is it in the approval queue? Or has it already been approved and included in the export? So well ahead of your statement reconciliation date, you've got visibility into where the transaction uh, transactions are at any given moment. And then reason number five, reporting. 
centralizing your data in one system, in one place, means that you're not wasting time matching apples to oranges. Trying to get the data from different platforms and software or spreadsheets to align with each other to gain any sort of reporting insight. By leveraging automation and integration, by consolidating all this information in one place, you're able to get that view. Everything's working and talking with the same language, so you're able to pull reports on demand. No more reformatting, no, ma no more relabeling fields, trying to figure out is this customers or clients I'm looking at, for example. You're also, of course, eliminating those handoffs from system to system, but really the, the benefit is you're gaining insight into spend and expense statuses on demand. So, for example, you can pull on-demand reports on spending, uh, analyzing it by expense category, tracking what the mileage expenses were in the last quarter, or just pulling the history of the expenses for an individual employee or group of employees. You're also able to pull reports if you're reviewing audits or compliance. For example, you can pull PDF reports of the expense activity for the last quarter, and that can include linked receipts if you needed to. You could pull reports on the billable expenses for a particular customer, as an example, and that can include their linked billable receipts. So you can present that to the customer, already filtered down with all the information they need. And as well, as I mentioned, you're able to, to use this information because it's all in one location and pull reports as you need to. Which means you can analyze the expense behavior. What items are, you know, what the average spend was on meals, for example. Well, you can pull that information, run a quick report in Excel, for example, and identify what the trends are on the expense categories. You can see, for example, which items or users are triggering violations frequently. Because basically audit controls and looking for fraudulent behavior, it comes down to identifying patterns of behavior. So if all the data is one place, you can easily identify things that are over the average or under the average, you can look for those, those hints, those clues that something's not quite right in the expense behavior. Now as well, it's also about getting insight into the expense uh, workflow at any given moment. As administrators, for example, uh, you can log in into Nixonia, you've got full visibility on all the users, you can identify where reports are at any moment, identifying exactly where they are in approval pass, identifying delays, or other roadblocks that are happening in the expense process and nudge them or move them along if you need to. Great. So with that, uh, covering the, uh, the five reasons we see uh, as benefits of automating expense reporting, uh, I did want to kind of show some of these concepts in action in a live demonstration account. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move over to Nixonia for a moment. I'm going to run through a short demonstration of Nixonia from the um, submission of a report through the approvals, and then we'll open the floor for any questions. Um, as I said, if you have any questions, type them into the question box and we'll collect them and answer them towards the end of the demo. But uh, let's join Carla with her expense report in progress. Now, Carla is able to log in Nixonia on the web or on the mobile application. So for example, here on the web, if we go to the expense reporting module, there, Carla is able to access any in-progress reports or see her history of expense reports as well. All the expense reports, all the receipts, they're archived on Nixonia for the next seven years and beyond. So they're always available for you for reporting or audit situations or reviews. Now, Carla, as the employee, has insight into whatever your policy rules are as well in the system. For example, if we go to info here, we have a quick snap screen of the expense policy rules that are configured in the system. So as I mentioned, we can really tailor these rules to basically guide the employee through the submission process. For example, I have rules set up for taxis where if they submit an expense without a receipt, it's going to be flagged to their attention and also flagged to the approver to take a closer look. Rules can also be set up to block items from moving forward. So for example, with my large dollar expenses like hotel and lodgings, items cannot be submitted without receipts. If there's no receipt there, this item isn't even hitting the approval process and so some sort of documentation is provided. And as I said, you can tailor these rules to whatever your, your requirements are and also include notations to, to communicate to the users what the expectations are. What do you expect to be filled in for the business purpose of the memo, for example, or what the rules are around the expenses. For example, I can give them guidance on meals. That we have a $50 limit on meals, receipts are expected, but if it's a travel meal, we'd prefer them to use the per diem category available to them. 
So as I said, take some of the guesswork out of the process. Any moment, anybody you drop into the system knows what the expense policy rules are. And as well, you can even upload a co copy of your policy document as a, a PDF or an Excel sheet or a Word file and make it retrievable by the employees as well. So everything is in one location. They can't claim they don't know where the policy rules are. They're baked into the system itself. So as an example here, if I open up Carla's expense report, here's a number of items that are in draft. So they're works in progress. And we see we have a policy warning on this meal expense. And if you click on the flag, you'll see why that flag's come up, or what the rule that is that, that we're breaking. And it's because we've just gone over the limit here. Uh, the limit for meals is 50, but this particular expense is 5180. Now, as the submitter, I can still submit this for approval. I may want to explain in the memo field why I went over that limit or take my chances. Uh, but otherwise, this item will get flagged to the attention of the approvers so they know to take a deeper dive into the item to decide if they need to approve it or not. So let's talk a little bit about automation doing some of the work for the employee. For example, let's say I'm creating an out-of-pocket expense. So on the left side, here I am filling out the details for the expense. And really what it's doing, it's leading the employee through the process, guiding them through what they need to fill in on the expense. Now, when I talk about automation saving time, defaults are a great example. For example, uh, here I require department and location for my expenses, but we've preset it with the home department and home location of our employee. That's the value that we're using 99% of the time, so it's set for them already. They're, they don't have to, to worry about filling that field. Now, just in case, we've also highlighted that one is in red, which means it's required. They have to fill it in, otherwise this item is not moving forward. So that's what I mean by making sure that any information that is absolutely required is reinforced. If for some reason I don't have a department here, this item can't even be saved or, or submitted into the approval process. So uh, I've touched on the web a little bit, but what I'd like to do now is actually move over to the mobile application. And what we'll do is we'll complete our expense report and submit it in for approval. So here I am logged onto the mobile application for Nixonia on my iPhone. I'm logged as Carla. Now the mobile app is synchronized against the web, which means that anything I add on the web gets copied to the mobile app. Anything on the mobile app gets copied to the web. So all the information is kept up to date. Sorry about that. Let me just uh, mute my notifications there. Sorry, give me just a moment, thanks. There we go. All right, so let's continue. So Carl is able to create expenses. Now, let's say, for example, I've just paid for parking. I've got my receipt in front of me. So all I have to do is tap on Add Item right here in the middle of the home screen. Add my item to my expense report and snap a photo. As I mentioned, receipts are linked digitally to your expenses. So you can photograph them, you can upload them, you can email them in, which is utterly convenient, especially if you're traveling and have a lot of you know, hotel expenses or you're buying a lot of things online. But otherwise, there's a receipt now linked to our expense. Now when I say linked, that means that now I know exactly which receipt, which document pertains to this specific expense. And I got full visibility into it. I can see all the details. For example, I can see this is $16. I can plug in the date in the uh, the date. Let's say this is from yesterday, just as an example. Now the other fields I'm filling in are based on what I require on our uh, our counting side of things. So customers and projects. Of course, I need to choose a category. In the background, that's what's tied to the GL. But otherwise. Everything else is filled in for me. I can fill in a little memo if I need to, but otherwise save, and that expense is now saved in my expense report. So in less than a minute, despite my talking all the way through it, there is an expense now created in the report. So let me do a second expense and highlight a couple of other uh, functions of the system that uh, eliminate some of the time wasted on expenses and improves the integrity of the data. Now, as I mentioned, uh, users can, can uh, capture receipts digitally. You can use a receipt immediately or store it inside the expense report to use later. So for example, whenever I pay for airfare or hotel online, 
I simply forward that receipt into my expense report so it's available to me. Let's use a meal expense in this case and link it up to our expense. And you can link up as many receipts as you need. So if that hotel bill is five pages, great. Link up all five pages if you wanted to. So again, let me just fill in the date and the amount here. Now without a pocket, I'm keying this information in. As I'll demonstrate in a moment with credit cards, that information will be filled in for me automatically. Now, in my case, this account is integrated with Intact. So that means we're using Intact dimensions for our expense reporting. So for example, when I choose a customer, there's a list of my available customers that have been brought in from Intact. And when I choose a particular customer, it also brings the hierarchy of the project so that I can only choose the projects available to me. So that's what I mean by leading the employee through the process and eliminating the opportunity for error. Let's just switch that back to an internal overhead cost. Great. Now, categories. Now, as I mentioned, the categories, you're creating them, and uh, in the background, that's what's tied to the GL. But with each category, as I mentioned, this is where you set up those rules and policies. Now, for example, with entertainment, I have a rule that says I need to know who was on this expense, who were the attendees. So we've enabled the attendee field. It's required. I have to fill it in, but I can fill in the names. I can retrieve them from a list. I can reuse if I want to. I can import them in from the address book on my phone if I wanted to as well. But otherwise, just tap a name and they're added into the expense, saving me time. And as well, if I have a spending policy, let's say a spending limit on entertainment, it's going to apply it per headcount as well. So uh, it's doing the work for me. I don't have to do the complicated math and figure out what our uh, uh, expense limit is if we have four attendees on this, for example. Now, at the bottom, as I mentioned, we have department location. It's already pre-filled those in for me, but other values are made available to me if I need to cross-charge. Lastly, we have the memo field. Here I can provide a brief description of the expense or a business purpose. We also support introducing additional fields if you need to capture other information around an expense. So for example, if all the travel expenses, I wanna record some sort of travel ID number, for example, that field could be added as a text field and it can also be filtered so it only shows up for those travel categories. The idea is to show the employees only what they need to see, not every field that's available, for example. Terrific. So I'm just going to add uh, two more expenses. I'm going to touch on mileage, and then I'll show an example of credit cards, and we'll push this through for approval. So the reason I want to show mileage is, mileage is one of those categories that well, people really don't enjoy doing typically, and it can be real, really error prone. Um, back a few jobs ago, I had to do a lot of mileage on my job and I'd have to fill out a mileage log as I go. So there I am a month later trying to read my handwriting. Is that a six, is that a three? Trying to remember if I, trying to make sure I filled out everything on my log. And sometimes if it was just a pain, I just didn't bother doing it. I'd rather eat the cost of it than spend another hour trying to figure out my expense reporting process. With Dixania, we automate the, and take the pain out of the process. For mileage, we actually integrate with Google Maps and we'll do the work for you. All we need from you are the locations that you went to. You add them in as what's called a waypoint, and there's a few different ways to do it. If I'm at my location right now, let's say I'm at my office, great, tap my location, plugs in your GPS coordinates wherever you're currently standing. Let me just label it so I know it's referring to. You can type in an address, you can also bookmark them. So for example, I've got ones I use regularly, like say the airport, tap, it's added in. You could also retrieve your history of addresses, for example, or import them in from your address book. Uh, as you can see, um, I've got three stops in there. You can add up to six altogether if you want to. But otherwise, once you've got your locations in there, just tap Generate Map. The system will actually map out the, those locations against Google Maps, create a copy of the map and link it up as the receipt, and then take the distance and apply it against our reimbursement rate. And there's our 1706 for mileage. So that's mileage. It works on the mobile application. It does work on the web, of course, but uh, mobile is the, the place we're going to typically do mileage as you're on the road. Terrific. So let's wrap this up with a credit card expense. So on this account, 
I've got credit cards linked up to Carla. So there's Carla's transactions. And she has 11 charges assigned to her right now. So she only sees the outstanding charges, the things that, that she needs to work on. So to use a charge, all we have to do is tap it, add it to a report, and it basically translates that credit card info into expense data. As you can see, date and the amount, it's been filled out for me already. And it's locked it in, of course, because that transaction is posted, so I don't even have to fill it out. All I need to do is link up a receipt. Let's say it's my hotel itinerary I emailed in earlier. There we go, link that up. Because it's from the credit card, it knows it's company paid, so it's non-reimbursable. All I need to do is categorize it. And we're also gonna capture additional details from the credit card. So we'll capture the pay to merchant, the reference information and description. By default, we'll drop it to the memo, but we can also parse it into custom fields. So for example, I've got a custom field called pay to, and it's just automatically filling in whoever the credit card merchant was. So now that's something that we can track in reporting. Otherwise save and close. And there's our credit card charge now added into the expense report. You can mix together different types of charges in an expense report. Here I've got some out-of-pocket expenses as well as some credit card expenses because they exist as line items. So that means when it comes to approvals and reporting and our export, we're going to filter the lines and direct them where they need to go. Are they going into an expense report for Carla to reimburse her? Or are they going into, say, credit card transactions or cash management or, or an AP bill uh, payable to the credit card vendor? So we can make it easier for the employees to create the report and do the hard work to organize everything properly for finance on the back end of things. Now as well, we have notification systems which will prompt employees to take action. So we can send reminders to approvers to review expenses if they've been sitting on them too long. Um, for Carly here, for example, we can send an email to her at the start of the day when new transactions arrive in Nexania. But as well, if she's been a little bit busy and fell behind, we can send an aging transaction reminder to her. So if these charges are still sitting here after five days and they haven't been used in a report yet, we're gonna send Carla a reminder email saying, hey, you've got five outstanding charges that are more than five days old. You need to add them to a report. And we can also CC that to finance or administrators if you wanted to as well. Great. So let's submit this in for approval. Now, as I mentioned, the mobile app is synchronizing against the web. Uh, it actually does it automatically every five minutes if you're connected to the web. So for example, if I go here to the web, refresh, there's our expense report. It's been updated with all the receipts and all the transactions we've been adding on the mobile app. Now, I also like to add that the mobile app also has offline capabilities. So you can use it, of course, if you're connected to the internet, but if you have no connection, you can still use the mobile application to create the expense reports, capture receipts, and build out the, ex build out the expense report. Uh, it, offline, so for example, I could be on a flight or I could be traveling on the road with no data plan or terrible Wi-Fi as I've encountered. I can actually still use the mobile app to save the receipts and build out my transactions as I go. I only need the internet connection when I need to sync up against the web. So if I'm looking for my newest credit card charges or when I'm submitting reports in for approval. So let's take our webinar report here, and I'm just gonna, uh, I've got everything in there, and as long as I've complied with all the rules, nothing's being flagged or blocked, I hit submit, and it routes it into the approval process. Now, the employee, Carla, they'll have visibility into who exactly an expense report is assigned to at any given moment. So for example, here it's been assigned to me as the approver. And Carla can see that same information here on the, on the web as well. There we go. So at any given moment, she knows exactly where the expense reports are sitting. Now the approvers, they can review and approve expenses or reject them on the web or the mobile application. So just as a quick example, if we're looking at Carla here, she's got one report assigned to her for approval. She can review that report from Julie. Any items that are in violation that have something wrong with them are flagged to her attention. So in this case, we see that this ex expense has no receipt on it. 
And at this point, I can decide if I want to approve that expense or reject it back and ask for more details from Julie or insist that we need a documented itemized receipt, for example. Otherwise, everything else on the expense report I can look at. I can see all the details of this travel expense, for example, and ultimately decide if I want to approve or reject the report. And there we go. Uh, on the web, just as easy. Uh, let's actually log in as myself here. There we go. Now I'm logged in as the administrator, so I can see more modules than a common user would. But otherwise, let's go to approvals. Here we'll see everything in the approval queue right now. So I'll go to the report assigned to me from Carla. We've got seven items within it. And again, I can review those expenses and look at the receipts. And because the receipts are linked, I know exactly which receipt is for this specific transaction. Now, as well on the web, uh, the approvers can, of course, approve or reject. We can also grant approvers permission, if you need to, to edit an expense. So, for example, if you had a multi-step process, let's say managers review the expenses and then it goes on to finance for final approval. Managers may have the ability to approve or reject the expenses, and maybe finance, they've got that extra ability to edit the expenses while they're reviewing them. Great. So in this case, I'm happy with everything, so I'll just do a quick sign-off. It's moved on to Matthew as our second approver. Again, Matthew gets notified, and if everything looks good, signs off the expenses. And if we jump back to Carla's account, we see we have a fully approved expense report. So at this point, now the report has been fully approved, gone through all the steps, now it's available to be included in any exports into the accounting system. And as well, from an audit perspective, you've also got your item history recorded on every expense item in every report. For example, it's as easy as just clicking on the status icon, and you'll be able to see the item history, what steps it went through for approval, if it was modified, or any feedback or rejection comments that were provided as well. Great. So that's an example of the process from start to finish.